In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we're going to show you how you can convert frames from a video into a multi-exposure photo. That is simply click the V key on the keyboard for video, and then it will take me to my file system. Now here I can take any video I want and have it be the subject from which I extract the frames for my multi-exposure photo. Now here's a tip. If you want best results, you want one where the camera is nearly stable. You have the objects in the frame moving in the video, but you want the camera not to do a lot of zooming or panning uh, because that can mess up what you have in this particular setting. So I've got one that's close to that. It's not perfect, but we'll try it. I'll, I'll click on this one here and then I'm going to click on the lower left option, compose a multi-exposure photo. And here we have our cyclists on the road and we're going to do a multi-exposure from some of the frames in this particular shot. So this gives me an option. But you notice that toward the end the camera kind of shifts and moves away. We're moving away from the highway. A lot of those frames will be ones we don't use. So what I need to figure out is what frames I do want to use. In order to create this from the best frames, there's a couple things I could do. One thing I can simply do is click on the camera for every frame I want to use. Here we're at the beginning and we have this little diamond at the front. I'll click on the camera and it will capture that frame. I'll move down here and then capture this frame, move forward again and capture this frame. And I can do this manually as much as I want. And so this will capture each of these frames as one of the areas where it does its exposure and we'll layer them one on top of the other. But there's an automated way I'd like to show you you can use as well. We're going to clear them all by clicking the button in the upper right corner. And then what I want to do is just do selected frames. But before that, I want to say I only want a certain part of this video to be the, the part where the frames come from. So to do that, I click on the scissors and the image of the film. That means trim the video. I'll click on that. And here I have my video and I can move my playhead from the left to the right. We do want to start at the left. I want them to see them going down the highway and we'll keep moving it until they get about to the sign here. And so that is, if I look at my time code, 8 seconds and 20 frames. I'm going to drag this back to about 8 seconds and 20 frames or so. Close enough. And then when I found the frames I want, I'm going to click on OK. Now if you notice, the time code on the left indicates that when I'm at the very end, I'm at 8 seconds and 20 frames. So it's taken a uh, subset of the frames in the video and these are the ones we're going to use. Now the other thing I want to do is click on Auto. When I click on Auto, I can have up to 10 frames that it will extract from my sub-segment here. I'll click on 10. I could use less if I want. I'll click on Start. Now it's automatically going to divide this up evenly in this section and give me 10 frames I can use. The next thing I want to do once I have the frames is click on the button in the lower right that says Go to Library. And it says where do I want to put them. This is the default location. You can obviously change that. You can put them in a subfolder. You can create a new subfolder. You can save them in several different formats. Clicking on the Advanced button will allow you to save them as JPEG, TIFF, or PNG. And you can do some other modifications here. We won't do that. We'll leave it as it is and just click on Import. Now it's imported each of those and I get the message it's making a copy. I'm OK with that. I'll click on OK. And now it has 10 images that I can use. So what I want to do is click on the Start button in the middle. And now I need to put this around the element I'm going to track for each of these. And we'll put it around the cyclist and click on the check mark below the square. Now it's trying to detect the objects in each of these photos. All the target objects have been detected. Now you may get a case where it doesn't detect all of them. In that case, what I normally do is I go through the ones where it hasn't properly detected them. And I will usually just X them out, click on that and make it disappear because I usually don't need it. In this case, the camera is getting awfully close to the cyclist and it makes it a little more difficult. So you take all the good ones that happen after this process and then you click and you can move forward and backward to see each of them, which is kind of nice. 
and then I'm going to click on Merge. Now it will process to layer one on top of the other from the first to the last. And here, instead of three cyclists on the road, I have a ton of cyclists on the road dressed similarly. So this is one way in which you can turn three into many. Another option you have besides creating a still photo like this is to create an animated GIF. I'll click on that button on the left panel. We have some default options here. I have 10 frames. It gives me a trail length, number of frames per second. I see the total duration is calculated for me. I'll just click on the play button about below the preview screen and it will render that into an animated GIF. And here's what it looks like as a GIF. Rather interesting. It also shows me at what frame I begin to get the shaded area here, you notice. And uh, so that might be a few frames I would leave out of this if I wanted a GIF that looks better and where we don't have a lighter part and a darker part. Okay, so we'll click the back arrow. I'll go back to my still photo and we still have this line here because we have these extra ones. If you want to go back and edit more, you click on the back button. And let's just take out a couple of frames at the very end. Now let's try that. We'll merge again and see if we have fewer frames but a better result. Yeah, this is good. Okay, so here I don't have that darker line. I don't have the frames where the lighting was changed because of the way the camera rotated toward the road. So I can do either still photo again or I can do my animated GIF. Let's render that and see what this one looks like. Yeah, that works pretty good. I like that one better, even though it's shorter. So you can use this technique and when you're done, either as a GIF or a still photo, you can click on Save As and then it'll take you to your file system and you can give it a name and put it wherever you want. But that's an easy way to take a video clip and find the frames you like and make a multi-exposure photo or an animated GIF out of that in PhotoDirector 365.